Hi, and welcome back to Chuck's Tuesday Tips. Today I'm getting ready to start on a kind of a long-term project. I got a couple baby pot-belly pigs that a guy had to put down. And I'm going to um, sculpt them into mannequins. And then actually mount them for the guy. But the first step to anything, I talk a lot about measuring and the importance of measuring is to measure and I have these charts here on an old video I made a couple of years ago but I figured it's probably time to do it again because I got a lot of emails and calls um, with people having fit problems and um, on life size especially now most people take three measurements they take a nose to eye a nose to the back of the head. On a game head they'll take a neck measurement. On a life size they'll take the length and the girth. The problem I see in is that when they're measuring it, they're measuring the length which is 20 on the outside of this pig and the girth on the outside. And that's where they're running into problems. They're ordering a mannequin that's based on the outside length the correct way to do it is after you get the skin off is to measure your your carcass um, itself without the skin now you can get away on the heads we do take the measurements off the face on, a, on the head part that, that's okay but once we start doing all these other measurements that I'm going to do because I'm going to actually flesh this skeleton down and um, set up an armature and then actually um, sculpt, sculpt back a little pig and whether I'll actually take it to the step of actually making a mold of it or not I don't know mostly it's just for the exercise of uh, practice and mannequin making now when I do measure I always do it in millimeters because it's easier to convert millimeters to inches than the other way around so like I was saying, most people get the nose to eye measurement, which is this right here, 62 millimeters. I've already started kind of measuring all these out because it, it takes a little bit, but not that long. But And then like I said, they measure the nose to the back of the head somewhere, which is 166. And they'd... Uh, and that and then the length and so on but we take so many more measurements like the head width behind the ears or between the ears I'm so, apologize we find the bone the eye orbit behind the eye front of the eye And, and besides your reference, this really helps you. You know, the more you do this, the more you touch it. Um, my uh, Fraser calls it learning your way around the animal. You really start to notice details more and more. All your best reference is right on the, on the skinning table. It's right there. All the photograph and flat flat reference and whatnot. That's fine, but really you have everything right in front of you. And most people, you know, rush through the skinning process like it's a punishment. And I like to to tell when I do my seminars and stuff. This measurement's right here at the canine sheath I'm getting right now. Skinning is not a punishment. Now I have all my basic head measurements. I'm going to measure the eye opening now. This thing's going to come out so cool. The thing I haven't decided yet is if I'm going to tan it into martini. Or uh, actually tan tan it. Then up here it's listed, you know, we list what 
species we're working on, the sex, the age, the weight, the condition it came in, the location, and the name of the person. In this case, it's domestic. It doesn't really matter. But now I'm going to go ahead and uh, open this up so we can try to get a length measurement. On the carcass and right away we can see as we're skinning this how much fat this little guy has so again if we ordered a a mannequin this size, the size of the outside, you could see what I'm talking about, how it would be way too big. And then you'd have fit problems. Again, when I skin, I'm always still a little bit frozen, so... We always look for the magic spot. This is called a gristle ridge right here. This is what makes a wild boar look like it has a hump. You can see the extra fat that they have up there. They don't, you know, don't necessarily have, it's not a bone thing. It's an actual gristle thing. So basically just because this is a domestic pig, not that much different than a wild pig. So I'm not going to subject it to the whole skinning thing, but I was hoping to be able to show you without this taking too long the difference in size from the uh, outside measurement to the carcass measurement. How are we on time, Jeff? How many minutes is this? Coming up on eight, sure. Eight minutes? Oh, okay. Keep going. Yeah, plenty of time. Okay. Now, fatty animals tend to grab more when you're skinning them. You can't quite work them the way you can, a, say, a deer or something. Or we could just peel it more. It's going to be interesting when I strip the skeleton. That'll be a good video. And uh, I'm going to put it back together. Again, it's just the exercise I'm doing. That might... My teacher gave me, before he'll teach me any more on anatomy, I have to do homework just like everybody else does. Just like I make Jeff do, or JJ, or anything else. Kind of like that movie Karate Kid when he said paint the fence. Wax, the wax, wax on, wax off. And he thought he was being punished and what he was doing was teaching him something. A movement. So I've learned, you know, to respect that and to uh, have a different attitude when it comes to grungy jobs that I don't like to do. Now sometimes, another thing you can do, you can come in from the front on something around the, uh, got them in the way, huh? No. Get the mouth out. 
problem is this guy's so little. Sometimes you can start your mouth from the front and then, you know, connect it when you're coming down from the back. I had these laying, and this is really sad. I had these laying, cooling down when the guy brought them in, Jeff. Mm -hmm. And a guy came and took pictures. He thought they were my pet's pig sleeping. So I just didn't say nothing. <laughs> That's horrible. It is horrible. I'm the world's worst. I'd be the world's worst farmer. I couldn't kill nothing, man. You know, I'd starve to death with food sitting right in front of me. But there, see how I've got that opened up. You get a little close up, watch your hands for yeah. a second. All right. Okay. These little teeny ears, man. This thing's gonna be cool, Jeff. Can't you just picture it done? I can already picture it. It's gonna be mounted awesome up. Piece. Yeah. Hopefully. Hopefully when I strip the meat, I can do it in such a way that I can save the meat too. Not waste everything. You know. Let's see if I can get the back disconnected. I'm doing this. I'm taking my time on this video because I'm normally I'd just like cut the head off and wing the measurement but I don't want to I don't want to do that for the to show you guys there we go mm -hmm. so I can show you what I'm talking about I've got that one sir I bet we could just run this thing on the bird wheel, Jeff. Oh, yeah. Make a hell of a mess, but, you know. Not even worse than them pintails. I was covered in grease. Really? Oh, yeah. And you sure he got them, like, up where Calusa Slim's place is or something? Uh, he said it was Northern California somewhere. Because I know that, man. You could Bedding area, I believe. That's what he keeps saying, but... Well, that's up by Calusas, huh? A little farther north. Yeah, it's about another hour and a half north from Calusa. Same with those geese. Those about, nice an birds. Inch, about an inch of fat on them. Yeah. Can you pan around the shop and show them them Watusis and that I've been posting on Facebook while I do this? Yes, sir. of how large those Watusis are. Look at the bucks in the background. size of that domestic bull that's oh yeah about got about 800 pounds on them other ones but the smaller headgear the reason that I'm doing this this way too like I said is not to have an hour long video but when I skin this to make the mannequin I have to skin down the hoofs and uh, leave the knuckles and all that so it, it takes a little longer than when you're skinning them to mount it coming up on about 15 minutes Chuck you want to split it into two videos no I'm almost got the head off all we'll right. just show them the body length measurement to uh, 
to uh Ginger, go sit down normal. To show the point. And then we'll do the next video, we'll do it strip the skeleton and all that. Good deal. Maybe show them how to finish measuring the rest. That's what I'll do. That's what we'll do. That's how we'll do it. This is gonna take about half a dozen videos to get this process completely done. You see where I that's where I skinned to the front and disconnected it like I showed you. See right there? Yep. Now when I measure the carcass we'll I don't even have to uh, allow a little bit for the tip of the nose because your mannequin like I said needs to be shorter there we go now we can get a length see that's that was the whole process of this and there look you could see the fat ridge on there that would be like if this was a wild pig it would make it look like the razorback so what we got and it's a general rule of thumb what we have here is 19 okay so it's one inch shorter on the inside it doesn't sound like a lot but it is and so how many millimeters is 19 the real way to do it would be to do it like this 450 okay and then I was just getting ready to tell you a general rule of thumb is about an inch and a half shorter I'm surprised that this is only an inch shorter but usually it's an inch and a half roughly smaller on the inside all right well I'm gonna go back to skinning this we're gonna wrap this one up the next video I'll show you I'll measure the whole the rest of the meat part and then start stripping the skeleton Thanks, and we'll see you next time on Chuck's Tuesday Tips.